I'm hungry for onion nuggets. Left the, the left. left. She has last left one the there. left. We uh, we talked about this forever ago. How Anna Casperian was going to do this shit eventually. It was obvious. It was coming a mile away, dude. And this was pretty telegraphed as of years ago. So this is a little article uh, on uh, Anna's brand new Substack called Independent and Unaligned, and it says, "You're right." I've changed. <gasps> the TYT curse strikes again. Yeah. I don't know what it is with TYT, but all those motherfuckers end up leaving the left and going off and doing some weird other shit. I think Anna said she's staying on TYT, though, so I'm not really sure if that's going to, is that's true, if that's going to happen or, or what's going to go on there. But we'll see. Um, <coughs> so here's what she has to say. After Trump came on the political scene, and especially after he was elected in 2016, the us versus them mentality immediately took shape. Yeah, it wasn't no, that wasn't a thing what? before that. I want a disingenuous statement. Prior to that, everyone just got along. There was no political antagonism in the country. How can you be a political analyst and, and write that out? I mean, like, you, well, you would say speak it, but this is like she's able to actually think about these words very carefully before she puts them out. And to pretend 2016 was that's the dividing line is absurd. That's when the divide happens, Scotty. Prior to that, Americans all got along as one you yeah, know, we're political all- unit. Anyone who refused to resist Trump was seen as a threat to the country, and I was fully on board with that mindset. It all felt righteous at first, but eventually the tactics deployed to fight Trump became repetitive, boring, and ultimately fruitless. Only shows he has increased his support among black and Latino voters despite wall-to-wall coverage of his unsavory, racist, or bigoted remarks. Several years of media raising alarm over Trump's threat to democracy has only resulted in a tight presidential race between himself and Kamala Harris. I mean, she's not she's not lying. No, sure. No, that's not so, no accurate. lies detected so far. I I read this. I've seen people freak, freaking out about it and shit. Um, mm-hmm. I have some thoughts on it. I don't know if you wanted to finish reading it. Uh, we can kind of talk about it as we go along or we can talk about it when it all wraps up. I mean, I'm not trying to carry water for Anna Kasparian. I haven't liked her for a long time. I actually, like, counted myself pretty done with her when she tried to get Jimmy Dore canceled for making a f- comment when her short-ass miniskirt rode up at work or whatever the f***. Mm-hmm. That was retarded to me, and the way that she acted victimized by it all those years later um, was just, like, it just stunk of dirty deeds done dirt cheap basically Mm -hmm. and uh since then i really haven't had a very very tasteful kind of like uh opinion of anna kasparian but i will say that i can understand some of what she's talking about i am now saying that you left the left is wild I refuse to be pushed out of the political left because that's just where I am on 99.99% of issues. I I think it's kind of weird to be like, well, that, 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 you know, I get what you're saying, but that that to me is the notion. People who were mean to me, people on my side disagreed with me. So I left that behind. They don't get to to decide where you are politically. (laughs) That's you doing that. No one made you make that decision. You can say you don't want to, you know, you don't want to agree with them or you don't want to, you know, basically be in the same, I guess, discussion with them. But that's kind of what the, 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 the kind of the alarming thing about I guess this, they well not alarming, but the way you look at the language is it's like I was pushed out because people don't want to have conversations. Right. It's like, well, shouldn't you be the one having that conversation then? Like she's got a way idea. bigger, she's got a bit way bigger platform to have that conversation without the hyperbolic I left the right. left bullshit. I can't help um, but acknowledge that the only thing that was accomplished by resisting Trump was less understanding and more division among Americans. I personally became reluctant to challenge my side or engage with voters who disagree with me. In turn, I became less knowledgeable about the people and the world around me. I saw Republican voters as an evil monolith, and that was a big mistake. This is once again not anything new, though. No, like, but like she's not supposed this, to say this. As a left wing political hack mm-hmm. for years, yeah, she's, she's, just, supposed she's to, just supposed to feed them Trump hate and yeah. tell them their shit don't stink. Right? She is supposed to feed them Trump hate and Trump fear mongering. And she's supposed to feed them the narrative that every Trump voter, prospective Trump voter or Republican voter in general that's going to be conflicted 
is some sort of monolithic monster racist KKK member or something. One thing I try to constantly tell people is like a lot of the people that are on the other side are f- are f- just victims of the same grift that you are, where they just think they're voting for the quote unquote lesser of two evils. Oh, for sure. There's plenty of emphatic Trump loving weirdos out there. Sure. Yeah, if the left wins, the country but is there, uh, we're, Trump we're a communist not, nation. Trump would not win if it was only the fucking dumbasses who have Trump flags on their fucking pickup truck that were voting for him. There's plenty there of people also, who are nothing sorry, like that who are fucking, you know doing it. There, there was also a point at the beginning of that that you were reading. You kind of hand waved. Where she was talking about how politics didn't used to be this divided, and that's not that that's not a lie either. Like, dude, I grew up in the '80s and '90s. I saw people that vehemently disagreed about politics, humanize each other, and hang out with each other in ways that seems to be more and more rare now. Politics <laughs> were kind of put in a pocket where you didn't really judge people for their politics, mm-hmm. and it wasn't something that people wore on their sleeves twenty four seven, three sixty five. Well, I do remember it was. It used to be more considered impolite to talk about your political leanings. Well, there's a reason for that. But um, I always, I also remember though when I was growing up, like a lot of like Bill Clinton's a f- communist. He's f- trying to do a socialist takeover of the country. I remember, I remember all that f- rhetoric happening then too. Sure. So I mean, like, I don't feel like the political divide is necessarily. St- I mean, clearly, like if you look at. F- in some of the, the Reagan well, may, years. Maybe it's more amplified now, I guess is a better way to put it. Maybe it's more amplified to the degree where extreme voices, because of these algorithms, get featured more broadly. But, like, there's boom and bust cycles of political outrage. Sure, like, of course. You of look course. at the 1960s, things were fucking ultra contentious. You look at the 70s, there was a lot of criticism of the Carter administration and shit like that. I mean, like... So maybe it's fair to say she would say that the cycle where it's becoming more divided... Like, 2016 you know. might represent a heat-up point. Yeah. But it's certainly not the beginning of strong political divisions in america Mm. agreed um i think though too that you know social media is a big culprit in all this because you know in in people's personal lives they might be kind of reluctant to bring up their strong crazy support of a a politician right whereas online people are way more like of course yeah they'll say anything trump gonna save america fuck you trump a fascist you know whereas in real life those people probably wouldn't mention those points of view to each other you know because they'd just be like i don't want to deal with that bullshit well yeah when it's it's just on a screen you know the internet has made it way easier to find people that are just going to parrot things that inform your bias and Mm -hmm, to push out anybody that might have contrary opinion and i will tell you like one of the i'm not trying to over empathize i'm just trying to give you another perspective on it as a content creator i understand (laughs) her saying they bullied me it's pussy shit and she should never allow herself to be pushed even optically out of the left or whatever. She shouldn't act like they pushed her towards the center, which is ostensibly pushing her right. That's just retarded, right? But this idea that content creators, and I'm at a way lower level than Anna Anna Kasparian is, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, when I critique the left from the left or humanize somebody that's right wing when they're correct on labor or they're correct on this, right? The backlash I get is instantaneous and insane, even at our level. There are people that will dedicate weeks, if not months of their life to trying to pwn me on something I said that was just basically humanizing somebody who might think something different from me politically. (coughs) And and I can only imagine at her level of influence, it's probably 20 or 30 times that. Right? It's plow on oh, a little yeah. further. Of course. I watched your uh, conversation with Matt Walsh today. I thought it was a good conversation. I haven't seen that film at all, but I mean, he touches on something that's very real. I watched your conversations with Ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. And you inspired me to have that conversation with Matt Walsh. Yeah, because I'm sure you have disagreements with him. and Many. Yeah. And so it's interesting to find like the areas of common ground, which I think people have been dissuaded from doing for a long time now. Yes. Hello, human. I'm Nug. You will subscribe and become a Pessimist Productions patron. Witness live streams of Onion Nuggets every week. New Deep Fat Fied episodes every Saturday. Other shows include Abandoned Hope, Ideology, You're Wrong, Fighting Boys, and more. Click the link. Feed the garden. Uh, my evolution started in 2022 when I was hugging, assaulted by a homeless man in my neighborhood as I was walking my dog. That horrible experience alone didn't change me politically, but the treatment I received from the far left and some progressives after sharing the story did. 
I was told that by publicly sharing what had happened to me, I was stigmatizing my unhoused neighbors. Others accused me of feeding into racist tropes because they assumed my attacker was black, but I hadn't even disclosed the man's race. He was white. Uh, not only did I suddenly see the flawed thinking of some on the left, I also witnessed their cruelty and hypocrisy in real time. These terrible traits that I had associated solely with my political opponents were obviously not exclusive to their tribe. I was stupid for everything, and that was the case. Yes, you were stupid for everything, and that was the case. Yeah, yeah. that is absurd. But um, I also think that this is a little bit of a misrepresentation because when I fucking uh, criticize Anna Kasparian for, like, ho homeless rhetoric, it wasn't because – of some story where she was attacked. I never even heard that story until now. Well, she's using cover, I, she's using her hugging. assault as cover for her recent turn towards right wing. They're invading our houses, chink. And it's like, no, Anna, you got hugged by a homeless person. That's a horrible thing. That doesn't mean that the fear mongering about immigrants all wanting to hug you and invade your home and hug you is real. <laughs> So yeah, she's, and like, she's using her hugging. sexual assault as cover for what is a move to the right on immigration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, and homelessness. And homelessness. And homelessness. I mean, like, right. she's right. been, I mean, she's been, like, very supportive of, like, destroying these homeless camp encampments and stuff oh, like bro, that. Like, she, she is, I mean, California. She's a Californian, and yeah. um, Gavin Newsom just recently, like, for whatever reason, he was like, we're taking this shit seriously, and he has legitimately destroyed these homeless camps. I don't know where the people have gone. But oh, they're well, not living where they used to live. Remember that Supreme Court ruling came down, and then it was like, oh, the West Coast, like all, all these, you know, these places where they, you, you know, get this you know, perception of, oh, it's super liberal. But you're right, Gavin Newsom's like, oh, great, now I have, now we basically have the cover to go and do this because before there was a Ninth Circuit ruling saying you can't do this, and then it was like, nope, the Supreme Court decided you actually can break up these encampments, you can find people, you can do whatever you need to do to clear these areas out, and of course you're going to start seeing that all over the country. Uh, that doesn't mean everyone on the left thinks or behaves in this way. This small group of lunatics do far from it, but it does mean that there are factions of and flaws on both sides of the aisle. And well, no if you acknowledge the, the dual nature of that, then why is the left exclusively the problem? Because you were part of it. Yeah, I guess so. Then there was the insane reaction to my tweet uh, from March 2023. I'm a woman. Please don't refer to me as a person with a uterus, birthing person, or person who menstruates. How to like who did? Who has ever fucking Nobody. called you this? That, is, this is, no one's ever said that shit to you. This is an overreaction to some college campus blue hair liberal arts major kids that were grousing online about getting rid of gendered language when it came to non binary people and what could we call a non binary person with a uterus. And then and this was, this was decides to out in those in those to college do exactly the same halls. thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then she decides to do exactly the same thing as like so many right wingers do to go find go cherry pick some nobody college student or professor online somewhere with no influence and be like, look at what they're doing, look at what they're doing. Yeah, I will tell you this. I will, I will, I will say this. I don't agree. Obviously, don't agree with her here, but the online left has become incredibly repellent. Incredibly, sure. it is like if you are if you engage in online leftist spaces, you won't go far before you trip over a smug fucker that you can barely stand to listen to for a fucking second. Of and it is overpopulated with these types of people, depending on which social media environment you're on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's overrepresented. I think most people don't give a fuck about politics until about two weeks from now. <laughs> Uh, all hell broke loose after I post those words. Most friends in left-wing media didn't bother reaching out privately to discuss their disagreement by personal preference. Instead, many self-described socialists took it upon themselves to profit from conflict by publicly attacking me with monetized videos. I mean, you know how the game is played, bitch. Don't fucking act like yeah. you're a fucking innocent bystander in this shit. Well, okay? they, they virtue signal about that sometimes. When they're covering certain things... They'll make a big hoopla about it. We here at TYT want to let people know uh, we don't feel it's proper to monetize videos like this, and we won't be doing that. Uh -huh. they, may, they, they get a little back pat, a little self back pat, because they, a giant media conglomerate organization, who which, which big fucking organization funds TYT? I don't even know. There's like a big giant fucking, uh, corporate organization that funds TYT or gives them a lot of money anyway. Um, sure but, uh, yeah, dude, th that's their little self back pat that they do. So she's just hiding behind that as well. Gotcha.
the, the, the longer this okay. goes, the more these start to sound like lame excuses. They even went so far as uh, drawing a link between my tweet and trans suicides, which sadly wasn't the most unhinged outcome of the debacle. Okay, so what, we were at the part where Anna Kasparian was saying a smaller uh, leftist YouTube show. Yeah. Put out some attack videos about her, which who gives a shit? Boo-hoo. If you're f***ing TYT, Wah. Anna Kasparian, you got a huge public profile. Some pissant channel that no one gives a shit about that you don't even mention by name attacked you unfairly. Who cares? Uh, TYT's volunteer YouTube chat moderator quit over the tweet. And someone reported me to Human Resources. An on-air transgender contributor even resigned from the company after being urged by online mobs and leftist shows to do so. Curious that not one of these shows hired her after she took their advice. Mm-hmm. Just a little... Ah, <laughs> she didn't know what side of the what side was buttering her bread or whatever the fuck. So yeah, some sour. Why is she so sour grapes about this? Like it didn't actually affect you, bitch. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. You went she, on to continue being a rich bitch. Yeah, she continues to be a millionaire and super successful. It's like all the people that did this shit got the, according to her. At least what she's written here, her their comeuppance. Right, this transgender person was like, I quit. No, no shows hired her. Oh, you won that one. Small leftist YouTuber. Are they a big hit now? Nope, they're still in obscurity. It's like you won, right? It's like it's like whining that you lost when you've won. That's what this comes across as. Yeah, like being a sore winner. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I never apologize for the tweet, and I never will. Wow, what courage. Oh. Damn. The whole experience forced me to come to terms with the intolerance on the left and allowed me to publicly reject the ideological shackles that kept my world small and, and less informed. This is just grift of shit right here. This is grifty shit. And we need to shift more to the center. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is just, that way I've got a whole step stack article just waiting in the wings. This is just Kamala ticks. She realizes there's no, there's no real uh, point in pandering to the left because they're just never going to unquestioningly and unflinchingly suck your ass till the end of time. So get that centrist dollar and you know like the fact that she is even more that she's even marginally more right than she was means a bunch of right wingers gonna be like whoa based Anna Kasparian and now she's free to put you know to put out the based points for uh the right while still maintaining her centrist status but basically just basically just doing a Dave Rubin but with a little bit more charisma right Mm, yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen enough from her post transition to know how if she's gonna shift into full like six gear grifter mode like Dave Rubin or whatever. But it's starting well, to sound that way from what there she was. Here. There was a video that I showed TJ. She was on a podcast and she was praising like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. Not like saying like oh I agree with them, but just like you know it's good that we're having conversations with people like that. You know, which I mean I guess in some ways you can interpret that as like oh well, I'm reaching across. But it's like, you know, how yeah, much can you really reach across to Matt cool. Walsh? I mean, yeah, why would you use those two examples? Yeah, like Matt Walsh. Yeah, you're not going to get Matt Walsh to f who's just a grifter extraordinaire to f suddenly be like, you know what? I see your point, guys. Like, he's already bought and paid for. You're not changing his maybe, mind. Maybe, it is, maybe it's not about changing his mind, though. Maybe it's about, um, you know, talking to him in an environment where people that watch him normally will hear a perspective that he's not normally providing. Perhaps. I could maybe see that. Up. Maybe she'll make it with Jimmy Dore. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, Today, I'm, I'm less certain and more curious than I was that. four years ago. I've made humiliating mistakes while covering political news because I was previously unwilling to consider or understand the perspective of Americans who vote differently than me. I'm hungry for dialogue, a space for in-depth analysis, and a judgment-free zone. That is what I plan to do here. Every week, I'll provide subscribers with. Oh, so, sign so up this, my is, sub -stack. this is the launch of her sub stack here. Yeah. Yeah. First gambit in the griff, right? Uh, two to three written pieces that dig deeper into the big stories of the week with the intention of finding truth rather than promoting a political side. Video posts sharing details on breaking news and political events, a weekly podcast beginning in November that will feature long-form discussions and debates with guests from all walks of life. Try to be Joe Rogan. Engagement with me in the comments section for paid subscribers. This is, this way, this is OnlyFans shit now. <laughs> Anna Kasparian will talk to you if you give her a little money. <laughs> the 
The point of this new project is the pursuit of intellectual freedom and open-mindedness. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. Have nice, nice, grip, I mean, whatever. I like to take people at their word, but this, I mean, like reading the whole body of this. Um, yeah, I mean, like yeah, some of the stuff, the er, some of the stuff early on, like you were saying, has some kind of point to it. Or and when, I can when see it was that. a broader critique, because I, I do agree that the, a lot, most of the online left has become utterly repellent to be. And there's way in. too much. I mean, like her, her criticism of Trump derangement syndrome at the beginning, where people f f hyper focus on Trump yeah. and how bad he is to the exclusion of any other point to the detriment of any political advance because he's yeah. oh he's hitler too so we have to f all eyes on that at hey, all times well, every other f thing falls clock. by the wayside it's so a, it's like you know you know trump is uh, yeah orange man bad but what else have you got right can we have a moment of silence for my barn cat patches who just got ran over jesus <sighs> christ you know soon their their own little regressive talking points will be coming shrilly i might add out of this empty vessel, this vacuous trash bag known as Anna birthing person, Kasparian. So I say they can have her, all right? Uh, I look forward to her upcoming PragerU videos about how the radical, you know, extremist leftist dogma pushed her into being a Nazi simp. I look forward to her upcoming Daily Wire show, The Anna Hour, or whatever the f it's gonna be called where she rails eternally against the values that she pretended to have for the last 15 years. I hope her checks are fat. I hope her bank account gets bloated. I hope she f***ing drowns in money. So best of luck to you, Anna. I hope you get everything you ever wanted and so much more.